Videos are an essential key to making an app more interesting and we want to continue here with our fitness app where you have different kind of videos and then you can go between them and do your exercises. In the last video we have already created this design for all the exercises and now we want to actually implement also the videos of our workouts. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started by going first of all to our exercise set widget and this is exactly this widget for these individual exercises which we have here in our exercises list view. And here, like you remember, we already put a gesture detector inside to actually do something if we tap on our card. And now we simply want to add here this on tap handler and every time if we click on this card, we want to go to a different page. Therefore, I call here this navigator and then we push to another page by calling here this exercise page. And this page is what we want to create. And inside of this page, we want to set then this exercise set. And this has then all the information of our exercises, which we want to display. And within this exercise, we have then every time a video URL, which we then display in our app. Therefore, let's create here our exercise page. Here inside, we want to create within our state, first of all, a controller. So basically, we have here some videos in full page view, and then you can basically slide between the different videos. And therefore, we put here already this page controller inside to control then our sliding later. And we also want to put here the current exercise inside of the current video, which we want to display. And this is then the model object I have created with all these information. And the most important one is this video URL. Now let's initialize our current exercise. So we simply call you this initialize method and then we get the current exercise by our exercises of our exercise set because each exercise set has here many exercises and we want to get here every time the first exercise in the beginning. And now it's time to display this current exercise as a video. And therefore we simply create here a scaffold with some app bar and this app bar has then a title of our current exercise name. And this looks then like this. So we have our title inside. We also want to center our title. We also want to set here the background color of our app bar to transparent because under it we want to show our video. And we also want to disable this elevation because here we have right now this shadow. And if you put it to zero, then we have not this elevation anymore. Right now we don't see the text anymore. However, this is fine because later our video has a different color. Now we want to go on and also create here all of our videos. Therefore, I create here this method build videos. And here we create every time a page view. So this is a full page and we can then later scroll between all of our videos on the left and to the right side. Inside of this page view, we want to set our controller, which we have initialized here at the top already. So we put simply this controller here inside. After it, we want to override this on page changed and this will then control all the changes between our pages. So basically, if we slide to the right side or to the left side, then we get notified about this change. And then here inside, we want to actually update our current exercise so that also the new video is displayed. To get the right exercise, we simply take here the index of the page which we get and then we choose here of all of our exercises, this exercise by the index. And lastly, we want to show all of our videos in full page view and therefore we create here this children property and then we go over all of our exercises and we map them to our videos. So I want to create here a video player widget and what we do here inside is that we put first of all our exercise inside and we also want to call this initialized callback. So later this will be called by the video player widget and then we want to call the set state so that everything is working correctly. But more about it later. Now we want to implement this video player widget. So I have created here again a new file for our video player widget. And we also want to make use here of a plugin for it. So we use here the video player plugin to display videos inside of our application. So make sure to put this here under your dependencies inside. Here inside of this video player widget, we get then the exercise and also this callback, which we have put already inside. And now we want to actually create this video player. Therefore, I call here this video player 
instance which comes exactly from this plugin. And here inside we need to set a controller and we want to later initialize this controller. However, before we also want to set here this size box expand around because we want to expand the video to the whole view of our page. And this is what this size box expand is doing. And it always takes some time until the video is loaded completely. And therefore we also want to put the other case inside. And here within our controller, we have this initialized field with which we can see if our video was already loaded. And if it is loaded, then we simply show the video player. However, if it is not loaded, then we show here this circular progress indicator in the middle of our application. All right, now we have done everything for the setup of the build method and we also want to initialize our controller. Therefore, I create here this video player controller at the top. And now we want to initialize our controller. So I simply create here a new video player controller and put it here to this state. And then we call here the asset because our URL, which we supply is every time on our asset folder. Here I have basically put some different example videos inside and these are the files which we want to load. And our video URL we simply get from the exercise because here we have this video URL attribute and then we simply show our video from the asset. Now that we have initialized our video controller, we want to also call this initialize method. So we need to initialize our video controller so that it loads everything correctly. And then we also need to start here the playing actually so that the video starts playing. And if it is ended this video, then we also want to loop through the video. So it means if we are finished with the video, we will start again from the beginning. Another thing is what we want to do is to put here this controller which we have initialized inside of our exercise. So I simply put it here inside because each model object has here also a field for our video player controller. And this field we can later use for stopping a video if we go to the next screen. If we now try this example out and go here to the page, you see this loading indicator and it never stops and this is because we also need to update our UI and this is what we do with this widget on initialized method. So we call actually this method within our on initialized and this will then update our UI. Let's try it now again with this on initialized call and I go here again inside and you see a small loading indicator and then our video starts playing. We can also go here every time to the next video and also watch these videos. And this was implemented here within our page view. So every time if we change here our page, then we put here our new exercise inside and then the new video will be displayed here. By the way, if you want to get this whole source code of this application, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you get access to my Flutter courses where I teach you how you can become a more advanced and better developer. Now we have here our video playing and we also want to actually create this overlay on top of the video with which we can control this video so we can stop and start the video and we can also click on these buttons to go to the next or to the previous video. To implement this overlay, we go again to our exercise page which is exactly this page with all these videos inside and here on top of this videos, we want to display our overlay and therefore we wrap this here inside of a stack and then we put here our overlay inside and simply create here a new method for our video overlay. And in our design, we show here our overlay at the bottom and therefore I put here first of all this bottom property to 20 pixels. So we want to have here 20 pixels to the bottom as space. And we also want to have on the left side and on the right side some space. Let's now build this video controls method. And here inside we create a new widget, video controls widget. And here inside we want to set first of all the current exercise. So this is for example, this exercise of one page. And we also want to add here some callbacks. So the first one is on toggle playing. And this is basically every time if you click here on this play button, then we toggle between playing and pause. And we also want to have here the other buttons supported so we can always go to the next video and to the previous video. Now we want to create this new video controller widget. 
And here we put then all these things inside which we have integrated before. So the exercise and all these callbacks. In our build method, we want to create a container and this container, we want to give some decoration. Let's have a look at our design. So here we have a white container and it is also rounded like you can see on the edges and it has also some transparency. And here inside, we set first of all the border radius to make our widget rounded. We also want to set here a color inside and we set here the color to white and we also give it some opacity so that we can see the video underneath. Next to the decoration, we also want to set a height for our widget and then we want to implement the actual content of this widget. We want to start here with the buttons. So we have two buttons on the outside and one in the middle. Therefore, I create this method build buttons and here inside of this button, we create a row to display multiple widgets next to each other. And we want to start with the icons on the sides. So we create here an icon button and inside of it, we put here some icon inside. So this is this icon here on the left side. And we also want to make sure if we click on it, then we simply call this on rewind callback, which we then later implement outside of this widget. Let's also create the second icon button. And here we simply do the same thing, only that we choose here a different icon. And we also call here this on pressed handler. And this time we put here the on next video callback inside, which we then also later implement outside of this widget. And this will already look like this. So we have here two widgets and we also want to place here one widget in the middle. The play button we want to put here in between and therefore we simply add here in between this play button. And then we create this method where we want to create a button. And this is another method which we want to create later. And here inside we want to put the context inside. We also want to create here an icon. So I put here this play icon inside. And we also want to have here an on click handler, which we want to implement later. So if we click on this button, then we want to actually play the video or stop the video. Now let's create this build button method. And here basically we want to create a gesture detector to determine if we have clicked on this button. And then we call here this callback. Now we want to build the actual button and therefore we create here a circle avatar and put here our icon inside. So in this case, it is this play icon, which we want to display. And then we also want to give it more radius so that we can make it a bit bigger. And this already looks like this. And what we also want to do is we want to give it here another background color. Next, we want to improve the design of our button by putting here some shadow around. And therefore we wrap here our circle avatar inside of a container and put a decoration inside. And this time we put here this decoration to a shape of circle. And then we set here a box shadow and this box shadow can we then define the color of the shadow. So we take here the same color for our shadow as our button. And we also set here some offset. So here this is the X coordinate and this is the Y coordinate. And this will then move here some shadow to this position here down. And you can also increase it if you like to see more of your shadow. And you see here right now that there is something moving to this location. And if I put here even a higher value inside, then you see it more clearly that we have here this shadow. However, we put it again to two and two. And what we also want to do is we want to set a blur radius so that we don't have here the full color. However, that it is blurred. And this will then look like this and it is much better, I guess. Now we want to implement the functionality. If we click on this button right now, nothing happens. And that's what we want to do here inside. To toggle this button, we create here another case. And like you can remember within our exercise model, we have put before this video player controller inside, which we want to use right now. The advantage is now that we can simply call this controller of our exercise, for example, this video here, and then we can see if it is playing or not. And in the case it is not playing the video, then we want to show that he can actually play the video. After it, we put here simply our button inside. So in the case that we are currently playing already our video, then we want to put here this pause icon inside. And within our on clicked handler, we put then this on toggle playing callback inside and put here false inside. So he should stop our playing. And this is what we later implement outside of this widget. Let's also create the other case, the else case. And here we put also again a button inside. 
and this time it is the play button instead. And what we also want to do is we want to call here this on toggle playing. And this time we put here a value of true inside because he should start playing the video. And this one here we can simply delete. It. One small adjustment we want to do here is to also integrate the loading because in the beginning the video loads and then we don't have here access to our controller value and therefore we need to ha have this special case that we look here up if we have a controller and we also want to look up if the controller is already initialized and if it is not initialized then we want to show here this progress indicator in the middle Otherwise, we can then access these fields and then we can show these buttons. The last thing is to actually implement this on toggle playing. And this is what we do here outside of this video controls widget. Therefore, we go again to our exercise page and here we want to actually implement all these methods. Let's start with the functionality of our play button. And this is what we want to implement within this callback. So we ask here first of all if we want to play the video and if that's the case then we call here our controller of the current exercise which we are currently here inside and then we simply call here on it the play method to actually start playing the video and we also implement the other case that we also pause the video in case that we have here a false inside of our field. And lastly, the important thing is also to update our UI every time if we press on this button so that it changes the button and therefore we call here also the set state. Let's try this now out. So I click here on this button and you see he stops playing the video. So he goes here inside of this functionality and if I click again on this button, then he will go here inside and he will again play the video. Let's go on and also create the functionality for this next button and this is what we implement here inside. So basically we call here this controller next page and this will then go to the next page and to the next video and here inside we can then define the duration of the animation to the next page and we also do the same thing for this other button here on the left side only that this time we call this controller previous page and we also put here some duration inside how long it should take until the previous page. Let's try this example out. So I click here on the next button and he simply goes to the next video and we also can do the same on the other button and he goes then back to the previous video. To finish our design, we also need to implement here this design at the top. And here you see that we have the duration of the video and the repetitions. And if we then go to another video, then this will simply change. To implement this functionality, we go again to our video controls widget, which is exactly this overlay widget here. And now we simply want to display here on top of the buttons some text. And therefore we go here to our buttons and wrap them inside of a column. And like you can see, we have here two text groups, one and the second one. And this is why we want to place them here inside of a row. And then we simply display here the first text. And here we have a header or a title of duration. And under it, we show here how many seconds this video lasts. And this is what we get here from our exercise model. So we go here into the duration and then we get the seconds of this video. And this will then simply display here these seconds inside of our UI. Let's also create the other case on the right side. And here we have the repetitions and we also get it here from this exercise model, the number of repetitions. And then we simply display it here within our UI. Now let's create this build text method at the end. And therefore I simply create here a column and we want to display two texts under each other. So here we create the first text, which is this title tag and under it we have some spacing and then we create the value below. Our UI now shows here the duration and also the repetitions. And if we go to the next video, you see that the UI changes. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.